Hi, I'm Matt from HockeyReviews.ca and this is the Brines Optic 3 goalie pad review. So we already did the review of the blocker. There is a review of the glove. I don't know if that came out before or after this video, but it's out there so you can see those in the description. And obviously this one is for the pads themselves. So this set itself is a demo set from Brines. So huge thanks to Brines for letting me borrow one of their kind of demo sets. If you want to see more content like this and hope I can do review other Brian's gear, please let them know on social media. It's greatly appreciated on my end. Let them know that the stuff is useful for people and they might make purchases. If you buy a piece of Brian's gear because of one of my videos, please let them know on social media. That would really let them know that my videos are helpful to them. So to start off, this set is obviously a demo set and it is very Z shaped. So this is a max core set. This is a 34 plus one. So if you remember my previous experience with Brian's pads, I had optic ones, I had optic twos, I had genetic fours, and I tested genetic fives, and obviously I don't have these, but I have them to test. Previously in an optic one, I was a 36 plus one. In my optic twos, I was a 36 plus one. And they had the shape like this as well, because it was a max core, so it felt like it was a longer pad. It felt like it was a 30, I'm gonna say it felt like a 36 plus 1.5 for Brian's. When I went for a genetic, it was a 36 plus one. It felt totally fine, just like the optic one. Then with Genetic V, I had to drop down to a 35 plus one. And with this one, this is a 34 plus one. So I don't technically have to drop down on this pad compared to the, the Genetic line was. If I went without this aggressive shape, I could have done a 35. But I knew that this was a max core and the shape is very aggressive. And I knew with like how the new strapping was and how the boot was that the thigh rise would probably play bigger than what I wanted to at a 35. So that's why I chose a 34 on here. Like we have the gameplay footage and stuff so you can see how that kind of worked out. But it ended up playing exactly as I expected. Since we're up here, we'll get an idea of the flex of the pad. The boot is, honestly, it feels pretty stiff. It's not like a solid core boot where it doesn't move at all, but it's also not that crazy soft boot that you see on some pads. And you can see it has a bit of stiffness there. So it's not that total thing where the boot collapses on itself and does have a bit of stiffness there. So we'll look at the core stiffness and everything. And this is a bit misleading and I'll show you why in a second. So this is how much the pad bend. You can see not a lot overall. You got a little bit up here and a little bit down here. So not a ton and this was after the puck machine and everything and this was also after other people are using it. You know other people are flexing it. So this isn't a totally new pad. This has been used and you can see pretty stiff overall, pretty solid overall. Now here's the misleading part. This gets in the way, we'll show it in a second, but if I move this out of the way and we go back, you can see the pad will flex more than what it does without it. So we'll show that on a different view to show really what like that kind of happens, but that's kind of the gist of it. And yes, this pad does actually look pretty small next to some other pads I have, but this core shape really does play like a, a role in kind of covering five hole and everything, which we'll talk about more when we go on to the other views. So now on to what is obviously the most important part of this pad, and that is the graphics themselves. And I've talked about this on the blocker review as well as the catching glove review. These graphics are very controversial and I haven't really seen many people say that they've actually enjoyed these. And I have to admit, I was trying to do custom colorway on this and to do a design I really liked. And to be honest, I just couldn't do it. I still think Shashirskin's New York Rangers graphics they did at the beginning with just like basically both of these prongs at the top it was a clean look and it was kind of interesting but you just really can't break up this pad in different directions and you can't use these to be different as well they're always the same setting so you select this one selects that this and that and so on so you can't really do kind of anything on the different sides you're kind of stuck with that so disappointing in that sense and kind of limits a lot of creativity there. But Brian's is the custom goalie company, so you can do your own custom graphics and have a ton of custom options on these pads if you want it and that's what you're looking for. So it is nice that that is an option, but I just found that I couldn't get the stock set to be what I wanted it to. And I couldn't get a nice graphic colorway choice just by going through their stock line. So that's kind of disappointing. And one of the first for me for Brian's, I was able to make the Optic 1 and Optic 2 look exactly how I wanted. Same with the genetic. So kind of disappointing from that standpoint. Now, while that is disappointing, it did match pretty well to the catching glove and the blocker, so I have to give them credit for that. Sometimes companies are kind of off on that. So looking at the face of the pad itself, you can see there is zero binding on here whatsoever. And I mean like the cord that goes through it. You can see it on the boot right there. It's really hidden behind there. That's been a thing for a while on Brian's pads. It does obviously still go through the back as you can see right here, but they really cleaned up the face in the past. 
and you can see they've done that again here you do have this interesting kind of mesh like material in there that they've been putting on their pads recently and you can see that showing up right there on the face you can option that off if you really want to for custom but you can see on this pad the super flat face design and the very tiny overall rolls which i'm not necessarily a fan of i kind of do wish they went to that more angular roll but i understand it it works very well for post integrations we'll talk about that in a little bit but you can see just kind of how flat and how like minimalistic these pads it really feel like when you're looking at the face of them it's kind of been a thing for brian since the beginning of the optic pad with this and this continues down that route i've had people ask me over and over again of what socks i always recommend and i've been using cut shield for a while now i have multiple stuff from them so cut shield is a company out of canada that makes cut resistant socks and these are their Pro Air 6, which means it's an ANSI level 6 for cut resistance on here. Full review of it up there so you can check it out. But I now have a coupon code with Cut Shield, so if you want to support the channel, you can check out the link in the description to Cut Shield, buy some socks, which I think are honestly one of the better socks on the market. I absolutely love them. They're pretty thin and they are cut resistant and they're not too hot either. Use my coupon code, you get 25% off and it helps support the channel. Now for rebounds on this pad while we're on the face, you can kind of just push down and you can feel that this is actually pretty tight and it doesn't really kind of bubble off, something that that does happen sometimes especially when you don't have that cord going through the face and that's not the case here it is very tight all the way through and just for the sound effect of it so you can definitely hear how much louder thigh rise is compared to down here in the boot that does have that bri core up here and for overall rebounds these were pretty hot they aren't bower hot basically i haven't found a pad that's really up that level where Bauer is yet these were pretty solid and I had a bunch off of here that kind of flew off pretty good and you can see like puck marks down here that is a good thing there and then also on the thigh rise it's pretty stiff enough and did have some rebounds come off there pretty hot too and we saw the thigh rise test with this and how it performed and it did do a decent job in like the RVH kind of keeping pucks from coming sliding out so that was good with that and since we're talking about kind of that bride core and the the core itself a little bit here. This pad is very stiff at the top. You can see Brian's has increased the basically durability of this as well. The stiffer this is, is gonna last longer. When I had my optic ones, the tips were basically curled in like this at the corners. So they were worn out like that. This, because it is so much stiffer, is gonna last a lot longer on here. It's gonna stay, keep its structure a lot longer and it's gonna be stiffer. It also helps with those thigh rise saves for butterfly RVH and everything because of the stiffness in here itself. We can see this no binding list design. You can see it across the whole pad. Brian has been doing it everywhere but the boot for a while. But you can also see what it causes at the top of the corners of the pads. And this has been a thing with every single pad I've ever worn. I also put matte on my pads right here for my Optic 2s. And that wore out really quick. So I never suggest people to put matte there. But you can see even on this material right here, it is wearing there. And that's simply because there is a sew point under here. And it kind of bunches up. And then these tips just end up rubbing with this and with the other pad and there's nothing you can really do about it. Maybe they could put a 3M PPF over top of this, which is just a plastic film, maybe to save some durability on there or something, or just to see if this can last a little longer. This doesn't do anything, it's just an aesthetics thing, but I know people complain about it, so maybe that's an option going down future. Looking at the side of the pad and you can see the very aggressive kind of shape here. You do have that very, very aggressive on the max core right here. I mentioned in the other view, that I wouldn't prefer this pad. This isn't my spec, this is a demo pad. When I ordered my Optic 2s with this, it came with this kind of curve. I wasn't really expecting it because I came from a Fly Optic 1 and I basically just wanted a more stiff pad of that and I didn't realize that the Optic 2 kind of had this really aggressive face here. I prefer something straighter than what this is. So if I was doing a custom of this, I would basically ask for as stiff as possible, but straighten that up because I don't like the kind of the shape of this. Pad is a 34, like I mentioned, and this kind of shows off just how much kind of that comes down because if you don't have this much of an aggressive piece and it kind of sticks out a little more, you can get a little bit more size in the pad and it ends up covering the thighs less because it isn't as aggressive as this. That's what I like more. When this one was in a 36 Optic 2, this thing really got in the way. So it's a 36 plus one Optic 2 and this is a 34 plus one. And the difference really is one, that boot. So really I would be in 35. This shape was what really caused me kind of issues. With that said, this shape, is something that I think will help out a lot of goalies. A lot of companies are going to straighter and stiffer pads, but when you go just straighter, some people still need that curve or want that curve in their butterflies. If you have a more narrow butterfly, you might want more of a curve or it's just a total personal preference thing. This kind of shape to it will definitely help cover that five hole up without having as big as pad, as well as not having to kind of bend this thing and kind of crush it because it's so much more aggressive. And when you drop 
just straight on, you can see it's kind of coming in more where a lot of pads I have kind of go out there. This one really does kind of jut inward. So this idea makes a ton of sense to me and I understand why this is kind of the max core stock shape on it. This makes a lot of sense to me. If you go too big on this, you are probably going to have issues with this thigh rise interfering with each other and kind of getting the way as well as your pants. That's one thing I noticed when in a deep crouch, this would on my optic twos kind of end up hitting my chest and my pants because they were just like, this is just too aggressive. Generally, I would say kind of think about sizing down for these and then you can use those straps to really pull your pad up a bit so you can get away with a smaller pad. Just remember this shape. And I think this is my kind of recommendation, this pad specifically in this shape for goalies that might have a smaller butterfly, but also want more thigh rise coverage while still being with a stiffer pad and with Without having really a curved pad because this isn't a curve it's just a straight line basically actually looking at the side pieces here you can see more binding lists everywhere there's like no nylon bindings anywhere on here very smooth design with all the gen pro kind of folded over brian's has done this for a while and i think they do a really good job of like the minimalist type thing on here this is gen pro so technically it might be a little bit heavier but it's a nice thing and it's going to last a while and you can see your wing over here and i still love brian's wings i think it's one of my favorite things that brian's does on their pads is i think this is just really quality a lot of other companies kind of stop with the graphics going across and they'll just do like a nylon here or just a single color here. I love how this graphic continues on it so you can kind of get more customization here. The logo there is kind of cool as well. So I like how this is a thing and it continues to be a thing. They could cheapen out on here and just make all of this a nylon and it would be slightly lighter and everything but this is a really nice attention to detail and I really really like that. Getting to the boot and we'll show off the inner boot in a second but just the outside you can see how thin it is and even with this side being that outer roll it is still extremely thin overall but this is kind of consistent with older Brian's pads too. Brian's pads at least in the optics roll all pretty thin like this it wasn't a massively tall boot and that continues on here and going on to the toe and kind of the rest of the boot here these toe ties which are the stock brian's one this is their smart strap and they have this little spacer on here with their cord on here people have always talked about how brian's toe ties kind of wear out faster than other ones so you can see this one is also wearing out on there so i've noticed that too i have noticed that some of my brian's toe ties like this have worn out slightly faster than others. so i don't know what it is with this cord itself or if it's just the construction like the way that this interacts with it but i've noticed that it just ends up sitting on the very side of my skate and it kind of wears itself out now this piece is obviously just like a spacer but this is a great thing so what i've been doing on a lot of my pads i do a skate lace kind of piece like this and then you put the toe tie on that so like the actual bungee on that so you get some separation for better post integration this basically acts as that piece itself because this not being right as tight this is always going to be a gap between your skate and this so you do get as you can see the gap of basically there so you kind of have that spacer put in there so it's a nice kind of way around what i do now this does get in the way a little bit more than a skate lace does in terms of hitting into the post but it works and it's pretty solid and i don't mind this solution so one thing i actually really hate about their smart strap system here the overall design is fine and it works and it would be a lot smoother but because you have your knot tied in here i have a hard time actually sliding these through the bottom of my skate. So my true skates, it's a massive pain. And I think I had problems with my Bauer one as well, but the true ones, especially, this is just like too big. And I would have to like pull this out and kind of pull it out more just because that knot is too big in there. So I wish they did something slightly different where this knot would just always be exposed so it can kind of move and fall, go through. But especially with this and then that trying to get the knot in, it's just really annoying. I love this like little silicone logo thing right here, whatever this is, rubbery thing. It's a nice attention to detail. I like how it folds over so you have double Velcro piece on here. But getting these in and out of my skates was always super awkward and annoying and I had to really jam them through. So I wish that was slightly different. Post seal is decent. It's pretty good. It, that little Gen Pro piece there, does help to give a bit of slack. I can drive into the post a bit better with that like there. And because that boot is so flat, it's gonna help a bit for post seal there too. But if you really wanna make this good, you could put a little bit of skate lace kind of loop there to give you a bit more. But overall integration is pretty solid there. And we go on this side, you can see. And then the other option here is this boot too, because there is no piece right here. When you do go right against the post, it does have a pretty good seal. You can fit through there, but because there is no piece right there, it's gonna be pretty good. And again, this is kind of getting in the way, not the actual pad itself. And because there is really no outer roll, you can see how tiny that gap is there. You can barely see it at all. So when you really grab, put that pad right up against 
the post, it kind of seals it very, very well. Obviously you have three spacing on here, so you can go inside, outside, and center. I just left it the way it came stock. Going on the inside of here to see a few other things, we have this awesome pad carrying strap. Brian sells a pad carrying strap. You can hook it in there and carry it by the ends of the pads, which I'm a huge fan of. I don't like carrying by bungees because they're stretchy, so why would I want to stretch these out? So that is a very nice, piece and a little tiny attention to detail that is great there and continuing on the kind of bootstrap you do have a bootstrap here i took it off as you can see right here it goes in there normally it's just a nylon piece and it goes on this side for the other one so now you can look at the sliding edge and honestly this reminds me quite a lot of the optic twos i really wish i had mine so i could put them side by side and really look at the changes on here but honestly it doesn't feel like it's all that different which isn't a bad thing it was a pretty solid pad so you have your boot right here and interestingly enough this piece right here you can see does have a bit of give to it so when you push in it it does kind of move in a bit but it doesn't really feel like the foam here is supposed to move in it just feels like there might be some spacing kind of behind this piece right here which is on the front and here so you can kind of just push it in this isn't super hard which is a little bit surprising because a lot of companies are going a lot harder for there for better sliding but you do have harder pieces through there and most of the sliding is done on the knee and here as well anyway so it's not a big deal you do have as you can see some exposed nylon right here but you probably won't have an issue with it because it is regressed so they do a good job of having this foam kind of come out here and then your legs can be pushing this down as well which means that, that piece will probably never be touched and you can see the wear on it is basically non-existent as is and it honestly looks non-existent so this is an excellent design in terms of keeping this piece on the outside and making sure that doesn't actually hit ice. This binding really doesn't need to go any further. It does stop right there. Some companies, you would like to see that go further so this doesn't wear, but you don't really need it here, so that is totally fine. I love how this piece still kind of covers your skate a little bit, and I love how it kind of sits down there, and this will be the sliding piece, and that's why they put that material there, so you still get the benefits of their Primo for sliding even down here, and you do have a harder foam down here as well to kind of benefit with that. The boot is made to really come off the skate as you can see how flat it is and how it really sits so high compared to basically older ones i don't have an older model to show very much like that genetic v where it's really off the skate and sits on top of it the one thing that i noticed on this pad and it happened when i wore a true and the toe while well, i was using the boot strap so it's slightly tight i got some ankle pain on here never had that issue with previous brian's pads but because this now sits so high on your skate the whole kind of pad sits up like this is more Previously, this would be cover coming down a lot. So I noticed that when I'm going down, there's not nearly as much padding here anymore resting on your boot. So your skate itself ends up being the piece that's kind of touching the ice. And I, I really wish like this piece now was extended more. So it did kind of sit on your skate a little bit more. So it gave you some more ankle comfort there. But I understand why they're kind of going this route to get that more on top of the skate feel. And so it kind of, does the NHL whole thigh rise thing, but at the same time, you definitely lose some comfort there. Hopefully you can kind of see here where the boot is all on the ground. And previously, when you had less tabletop and a boot channel, this part kind of came down more and gave some like, not padding, like landing padding, but just a little bit more thickness here. So it wasn't your ankle kind of always resting on this ice. And I felt that a little bit ankle tension on there because of that. Where before when you had that little it kind of just sat there and felt kind of nice i would prefer that to go lower down just so it would end up like giving you a little bit more cushion and like leverage there because i felt it more comfortable continuing on here you do see this kind of chunky and thicker piece right here compared to some companies it's just the overall shape and i should have called it on the other side but as you can see it's not actually that massive on the outside but when you go on the inside it is definitely a little bit bigger but this isn't actually that huge or anything. It's just a lot bigger than one, some of the tiny, tiny pieces you're seeing on some companies now. But everything on here is pretty standard for optic. It's a pretty dense foam going through it and it doesn't feel like a massive change from the two or on the genetic and now I guess a conic line. So going all through here and it is all just one piece going through here when it does break up and become two here. I'm curious to see why Brian's is still doing this in two pieces. Maybe it's easier to make. Maybe these are all like the same size on pads and then this one can be adjusted or something like that. But it's interesting that they're one of the last companies I feel like that really breaks up these pieces. A lot of companies are doing one piece all the way through or one piece of foam basically all the way through here and Brian's isn't. So onto this calf piece, which is a decently solid piece of foam. You can flex it a little bit as you can see, but it's a pretty high density foam 
which is gonna help a bit with stability and it just won't let it kind of fold over your leg like some other companies are, but this is a preference thing. Some people like that and it's not the end of the world, but I'm a fan of that being solid right there. Interesting how it's not kind of be regressed behind this. I'm not sure if this is technically NHL legal or not, but usually you would have to have a bigger gap here, but this one doesn't. And I honestly haven't really seen Brian's optic really have a massive gap here either. So curious about that, but didn't ask and didn't really look into it. Cause obviously this is a demo set doesn't need to be NHL legal. Anyways, then we go on to the knee block and it's kind of just standard stuff from what we've seen from previous Brian's pads as well. You have your wing right here sewn in right here as well to give a bit more stability we'll take a look at the knee block more in a second and it does have that extended block as well so when you put weight on it you obviously get a little bit more total length right there for more stability with this kind of piece coming out the one thing right here that's kind of interesting that you should notice right away and i noticed right away is the interference between these two pieces now with this super aggressive shape as you can see these pieces always get together and if you try to flex this pad at that they just also get together like these parts just hit each other and can't really move now it's not necessarily a huge problem you don't really need this part to flex all that much it barely flexes on some pads that i have and then on other pads it does move quite a bit more but if a pad's kind of sitting totally off your skate and it's kind of just resting on it and it's not kind of compressing itself it's not really a big deal but it is something i notice when you're kind of just sitting there like oh that's kind of odd and i had no issues playing with these whatsoever they felt mobile enough that it felt like i could move fine enough i never noticed this getting in the way of itself but I want to call out that this is a thing. And I think that maybe going forward, it might be a better idea for Brian's to kind of cut this more, to kind of be over here, or I don't think you need to go down way here. You could probably start it here and just kind of do more of an aggressive angle this way. That way you could get more of a bend in there. Even if it is the softer foams like this behind there, that's gonna be able to be kind of bent down more than what this hard density foam is. And see if, if you put it under, you can see how the pad starts to move more, but when it kind of hits there, which it kind of ends up on, it doesn't move at all. So kind of weird that this is a thing. And I think the max core is definitely causing this. If this was more of a fly or flex, I think this would be less aggressive right here and this wouldn't be an issue, but it's definitely kind of getting in the way of what kind of could be moving. So interesting to see here. And I really do think they should cut that kind of on a more aggressive angle there, open that up a little bit to allow this to move more naturally. Core tech, which are core shorts and people have heard of these before, they were labeled under Under Armour before, now Bauer sells hockey specific one, but core themselves sell their own line of pants and supportive clothing and apparel. Basically this stuff helps you with growing strains, growing pulls and helps keep your hips tight and everything like that. And speaking of injuries, I kind of pulled a growing playing in the playoffs a few months ago and have had to keep using these Cortec shorts to make sure my growing doesn't get worse. When I don't wear them, I can feel it and it hurts kind of to walk the next day with these. Keeps everything nice and tight and keeps everything from stretching out too far and getting injured. So these have been a huge savior for me. Check out the link in the description to their website and use my coupon code that's in there to get a discount and I'll put it on the screen here. It helps support myself and the channel so I can make content and doing real reviews, but also you get a solid product that I use all the time. Sliding on this pad, it does have their Primo and their whole Opti slide thing, which has been around for a while. Just to be totally honest, I believe that their material has been kind of surpassed by a bunch of other companies now. It still slides well. It still slides better than most Gen Pro pads or weave pads, but it doesn't slide as good as Vaughn's Quick Slide. I don't know what's on that for coating, but just way more slippery than what this is, even though it's I think technically the same material. The finishing part on the quick slide makes it slide better. It also slides better than the speed skin, to be honest. For most pads that have that just normal Gen Pro without like the Warrior plastic piece, this slides the top of all those, except for my trues, the just standard Gen Pro and we both slide better than what this pad does. So I think it is the stiffer foams going through here that help with that sliding on the trues where this one does have a bit of give to it. Something about those just makes pushing off with them very consistent and slide very well. Again, this pad still slides well. It's still very good. I don't really have an issue with it, but at the end of my Optic 2 life, I did find them slowing down. So like this stuff, it almost felt like it got dusty even though I cleaned it off and it just slowed down on me. So I put that PPF on the block and it went back to really fast and they were fantastic again. So I just something I noticed with these pads where this material can kind of wear out a little bit, even though it doesn't look like it's wearing out something on the like finishing of it has. And I haven't noticed that on the Vaughn ones yet. So just with this stuff, but I did use my Brian's ones more. So it's not directly a one-to-one -one comparison there, but sliding is okay. It's not the best. It's probably below Vaughn, below Warrior, 
below my trues. So that makes it about fourth tier, which isn't bad, but it's still not as amazing as it once was. We're kind of led in sliding. Now getting onto the boot itself, I showed off how this sits on your skate. It's not my preference, but that's how pads sit now. And I get it for NHL height legal reasons. So as you can see, max 34 plus one on here. And this is a very great attention to detail. I love to see Vaughn's doing something kind of similar to their cord right here is being covered on the inside edge. So your skate is gonna hit this one more often than that. So you can see that cord and that binding going through the face. That is covered back there, you can feel it, but it's covered by this Primo, so you're gonna get more durability out of this, and it's not gonna rub on here. You can see Bauer pads with massive rubbing and like ripping this cord apart. This cord's also a much lower quality on Bauer than it is on this, so that's another reason. But having that covered right there is fantastic and a great move by Brian's. Opening up this channel, you can see it's not like a massively wide channel. This piece is pretty in the middle of the pad, so it could be further out to be more open, but that's not really the limiting factor anyways. Both of these pieces make it kind of a bit of a tighter channel and this whole kind of strapping system in here definitely makes it a bit tighter they still have their kind of professor strap piece up here so you can see this strap right here and the strap or not strap these tabs can be tied into for their professor strap it's an option i can't remember what they call it rotation strap or whatever anyways it's professor strap that is in there i took that out i never use them and to be honest with this strap right here you don't really need it all that much this design reminds me very much of kind of where all pad companies are going right now very similar to a true frs system let's be totally honest now you don't have two adjustment pieces up and down but these are adjustable in this way so you have obviously right there and right there and interestingly enough these are sewn in with gen pro so they're not really removable or you can't really like yank them out which is a bit sad i wish it was kind of removable but i understand why they're not it's gonna be more durable if it's like that than if you could just untie it they have adjustment pieces right here and this is a double elastic as you can see so brian's has done this in the past with their straps where they make it double elastic also right here so you have a bit more durability on them and that's the case here as well and you can see how this inner strap piece works segmented in three parts a nice soft cushiony foam in here as well to add for comfort and that wraps around your leg like so and you attach it in like this i went as loose as possible and i still couldn't get them loose enough so i was basically attaching this to be as like this with this exposed velcro rubbing on my leg while it was my hockey socks but still honestly is i'm not a huge fan of that i get why they went this route and i understand what the point of this especially with how a lot of companies are doing straps nowadays and even this piece is pretty nice it's padded and everything but i just don't think there's enough adjustment on here and i really kind of wish this was gone and you could put it out here so if that strap was it longer and you could kind of move it all down here you kind of get stuck with this piece though like that's kind of going to interfere a bit but i think that would be a nicer option than having just one tiny limited part right here yes you can go up and down a little bit but you can't really do it a lot so i really wish this was there's kind of just more of it there or even something i think that would be kind of interesting is if this velcro was reversed and this was the sticky side so instead of having to go like this it would basically go like this so it would attach on the outside of this piece right here so you get a bit wider of a leg channel and you can move it up and down a lot more and you wouldn't be as limited by an internal tab right here so i kind of wish this was something different i'm a huge fan of optic pads i use one and two i love them so much optic one strapping was kind of awkward it had like their x strap optic two i think was like perfect and they did a really good job of it but i just think this one is of course it's really easy to use this is a really high quality and again that rubberized silicone type strap all that is fantastic it's just i don't have enough options in here and i wish this was bigger and I wish these were removable. Even with the FRS system, which you can't really remove the whole thing, you can take out the straps. I always take the top one out of my pads now, bottom one stays in. So I wish something like this was more customizable in that. Now, Brian's, again, custom goal company, they can probably do what you ask them to do. This can probably be bigger, this can be moved, but I would like to see as a stock set, maybe put this piece as the Velcro piece going on the outside, see how that works. Maybe that doesn't work with forces or whatever if this is stuck like that and you, are going like this like maybe it will pull off or something but i would like to see something slightly different here because i don't really think this is a huge improvement over what they had and one these two will always interfere with each other with his inner strap as well and i just think they could have definitely done something better on here and brian's has been really good leading the kind of elastic system everywhere they were one of the first companies that took off all straps so seeing that happen would have been kind of a nice thing there now continuing on this like channel you do have this air mesh through here and there is a tiny bit of wear of it up here where people's knee guards have hit 
I always wear socks on all of my stuff, so mine doesn't really wear out, but some people have that exposed Velcro. So I think exposed Velcro on knee pads is probably gonna possibly chew this up a bit. So maybe if you had nylon kind of going down more, but that's, you gotta know that and just put socks on, socks are great. But for me, it wouldn't be an issue, but it might be for some people. Going on to my favorite part about this pad and optic pads for a while. The removable calf pillow. This is a fantastic design that I think basically cheats with goalie pads to be totally honest and I absolutely love it. I've been talking about pillows forever. They're fantastic. Ever since my Optic One, pillows like this really help push and keep your calf down by kind of pushing this piece down. So even if your knee's not totally on, it helps push this out and push it down to cheat a little bit. This still worked and everything and it was fine, but it was just kind of adding and cheating to the inside. So I was a huge fan of that. It also helps stabilize all of this so you get a bit more stability. It's also more comfortable too, raising your leg off a little bit just to have a little bit more support there as well. So huge, huge fan of that there. Get onto this outer wing and it's honestly feels really similar to other ones. OptiSlide logo, which has been on there since the Optic One and obviously means this material and kind of the overall design. But then you have this outer wing now, which is attached through this Gen Pro piece, which is tied right here. So you could undo this, open this up, take a look at the foams and stuff in here because it's Velcroed in. But I'm not gonna do that because it's a demo set and I'm just gonna leave it as is. But you can see how this whole piece works with your leg to kind of fill out that space to give you a bit more stability down here and to kind of just act as a more whole complete channel. And when you look, when you have kind of here, you have basically one, two, three, four pieces on the inside. So it's a pretty beefy inner kind of sliding edge. Again, fills that out, works pretty well. I'm a pretty big fan of it. Finally, we have this outer piece that we kind of already talked about, segmented here. You can see that interesting mesh stuff right here as well. And it has a new strap on here, which goes from here to here. And it's a stiff strap. So this is a nylon without stretch, so it doesn't go anywhere. Kind of interesting that this is a case now. It is adjustable here, so it can go up and down, but usually it was kind of the other way around I always found, so this whole piece went over there. So interesting, it's the opposite way now, and it's also interesting that it doesn't stretch. Not sure the whole reason behind all this, but it's a new kind of strapping system, and honestly, I ended up doing this pretty loose as well like this. I tried to get this pad as loose as I could to wear it, but it was kind of a losing battle because all this inner piece and everything is pretty tight and snug. Finally, we get on to the knee section and we'll open this up in a second, but we'll talk about some strapping here first. Very open block, as you can see, have some sure grip on the both sides for some grip on here. This is removable by tying and pulling it out. And you have, as you can see, it's just a little tiny flap here with some Velcro on it. This strap also kind of goes down here. And this is one of the things I feel like they kind of overlooked a bit and worried too much about logos and kind of design. Right here, this looks perfect. So having this knee piece right here, going here, lines up perfectly. It looks fantastic and it looks like it works 100%. But maybe I'm just too fat, but my knee was always basically back here. So if I ever wanted to do that, it would just kind of fall out like this. And honestly, it was very uncomfortable. The only way I could get this thing to be comfortable is if I did this. And even then, I kind of wish I could like make it come down more so it was out more and kind of not coming through here. And maybe I could have just undone that and pulled it out this way. But obviously the slit is here for a reason. And I just felt like this Velcro piece wasn't the right angle to actually attach this correctly. And I think it should have come out here. This is another thing with these pads where I'm talking about limiting Velcro options. I like this in terms of design. I think if this piece kind of came all the way down here and came out and here, you would have such a wider range of where you could do your knee strap and you could really dial down how you liked it and how the pad would sit and wear. But because you don't have that, you can't make that change. So when I wore this, because this is a 34 and it's kind of a little bit small on me, I always put the strap down here and it never kind of lined upright like this and it always felt weird. So I really wish I could have done it like down here and it would have opened that knee block a bit up and would have just been honestly kind of better. Yes, you lose some of this design, but it gives you more options to move things around. And I wish that was a thing there. And with that strapping though, because like this inner piece has to be so tight and the whole point of this pad now is to basically come up your leg so you get that more thigh coverage, you have to wear it a lot tighter. And I really found that like the pad really slides up your leg. So this is, remember, a 34-2. And if I tighten this kind of the way it's expected. Look where my knee is now on this pad and it really comes off my boot of the skate. So it really gives you that more thigh rise coverage but not exactly landing where I would want my knee to be. I would want it to be more centered. But with that, how that comes up, it kind of goes down there. I had to use this strap for this pad. Uh, this, this was too kind of tight. And this, I need the pad to come up a little bit because these are 34s. 
I noticed that if I try to match what this is, it doesn't really work right. You can see how it's kind of coming on this angle. You can't really get it to fit like that. It always kind of wants to come here. And the way I did it up was kind of like this. So I think this piece should be kind of bigger. I wish they did like a bigger piece of Velcro here so you could kind of put this where you want it to. Because I found that like when I did this, it's not coming across the knee the right way and it's kind of coming on an angle here. But when I did like this, it ended up working a lot better, especially when you're down in the butterfly and it just, everything kind of lined up nicer. So it would be nicer if they had more of a place to put the Velcro here. So looking at this knee block and we're gonna open this up in a second, you have a decently like hard foam here. It's soft, but it's still firm. So it's not like a plastic or really, really high density foam, but it's firm. So it does a really good job for dampening kind of impacts falling on there. You do have the sure grip, which isn't the best sure grip out there. You can kind of see it worn a bit, but that's expected to where, like where that is. There's a lot of grinding on there. And we open this up. And you can see you have your adjustable strap here. So you can tighten that or loosen that. It's already at this loosest setting and I almost found like it was still not loose enough. So maybe this could be a little bit longer in that sense. And you can see obviously the slit through here to go through here. It doesn't curl the actual shape of it. We get this inner block, which is a very, very, very dense foam on here. And this is kind of what has been on Brian's pads for a while. And we open this up. And we can see how the foam's actually in here and you can see how it's kind of three pieces in here. So I like that this is a thing, makes it super easy to replace these if you have to. If you have to add more padding, you could easily kind of shove a softer foam through there, some like D3O or something through there. And this shows you how all three of these pieces connected kind of work in stabilizing this. So there you can see the binding through this piece that's holding it kind of to this piece and the one binding. So there is an eye on the binding here, which is like, there's not a ton on this pad, right? There's some right there and some right here and how this foam can all be on its own. It doesn't move a ton out there. Like it does get stopped a little bit, but it can move. And a lot of these companies are doing the stuff through the face of the pad now. Brian's isn't and i don't really think it's necessary but see how that goes there but once you put this piece kind of where you want it right there and then you kind of fold this piece over it does hold a little bit better than what it was before and then you attach this piece and it holds a little bit it's not like those other blocks so that kind of totally lock it in and pull the pad this does allow a bit more to moving there so it's more of a traditional design but also when you do that obviously this is pulling and that's pulling so you get both of that kind of action there i don't mind this at all i don't think this is a negative thing and i don't think this means the pads kind of behind the times i love the non stuck in blocks i find they get in a way a lot but i showed a bunch of goals in the nhl from it happening so i have no issues with this but some people think this might be a more traditional design and kind of outdated i'm not necessarily in agreement with that onto the back here we have your knee pad piece right here and the kind of sad part is brian doesn't offer these stock anymore but i get it because a lot of people like myself would take those knee pads and instantly sell them and never use them so i get why they're not made stock this is their knee pad connector piece in there so nice little detail they still have and i love how it's just like a little piece tab that sits in there and is always in there totally blank up here nylon pretty simple design it makes sense i might prefer to see some gen pro up here just because nylon can bleed into pants and stuff but you have the same color pad and pants not an issue but i've seen it happen before so rvh seal is pretty good as you can see it does have a slight angle here so when you do lean into it you get a little bit off here and this isn't totally straight too so when it is curved a bit it will kind of come off there but it's pretty good and a puck can, it gets stuck, but if it was really jammed, it might come up there. We saw what the RVH test was, but overall seal on that is pretty good. Leaning into it, there is a tiny gap, but I can't see a puck coming under this whatsoever because that's pretty hard to get under. And if you take a puck, you can see that's not really going anywhere. And that's really me leaning into this corner. So sorry, there's a shadow, but that's not getting under there as you can see stability on this pad is very solid and brian's has been really good with that for a while because of this pillow in here and this is velcro well you can remove it but that pillow helps kind of push the calf down and the whole pad itself feels very stable on the ice when you're moving and it's very impressive the also thing with this pillow is if you strap this loose which is harder to do with this pad with the new strapping system but it was easier in previous ones if you put that really loose, that pillow helps the pad really seal the ice more. So with this pillow in here, it kind of gets in the way of your calf. It doesn't get in the way, but pushes your calf down, pushes this down and helps push that part down. So even if your leg is kind of off, it's almost like it's cheating. I've called this out on every optic version 
every pad I've used so far and it's kind of similar in this one but with this I had to strap this so tight to, because of the sizing and how it kind of fits it didn't work quite that well like other ones did but when you really strap that loose like this it definitely does kind of cheat pretty well and get down on the ice torsional flex on this pad is pretty stiff overall they really stiffen this so you can see you can kind of bend it on the side still a little bit but it's pretty stiff that way this side it bends a little bit but then back here this is still pretty stiff like the genetic definitely feels a lot softer and this doesn't feel bower stiff and kind of annoyingly stiff it's honestly a pretty nice like it's stiff but still feels a lot more like a traditional pad those ones with the braces that go through the face and everything this one still feels like you move a lot more on it and it will kind of move with you a lot more and there is a slight like i said torsional flex there but overall it's pretty stiff and solid and this is the max core so it kind of makes sense so one thing i want to talk about with this pad is brian still does have two pads and i've seen some people say their pads are very similar to each other especially with how they stiffened up top of the well it was genetic but now iconic line and i have to say i kind of disagree a lot with that because this pad is still a very torsionally strong pad when i wear this this part and everything feels much more similar to like that stiff cord bower than it does that iconic or some other softer pads. You can twist this a little bit, but not much, and it's very hard. And when I'm wearing it, it feels a lot stiffer and stable kind of down here than what some of those other pads are. With that said, I think Brian's has a really unique offering here where this pad kind of down here feels like you can move a lot more in it than some other pads. My Hyperlite 2s, for example, I find that when you are trying to do things down here, the pad kind of feels chunky and blocky and kind of flips over. This one, I find that twists a lot more than what some of those other pads do. And I feel like it's a little bit more of a traditional pad for that. So the Iconic line and the Genek line was still more traditional and softer and more torsional flex than what this one is. But this one's kind of that bridging gap as well so yes it is that more butterfly stiffer style blocking style pad but i do notice when you're really leaning into posts and stuff this definitely feels more like it's moving with you than getting kind of stuck so i think brian's has a very unique offering here and i do think it's differentiated enough between this line and their iconic to make sense and to exist now you can order these in a ton of custom options which is one of brian's best things right you can do the fly the flex and the mac and you can see the shape there's all shape differences right this is the max the fly is kind of out here more and the flex is more just rounded all over and is a lot softer so brian's offering that is huge i think it's really solid the one downside is it's hard i think to get people into this pad who might want that softer pad like with that shape because they might not see it at retail and you'd have to go custom if you don't really know what it is it's kind of harder to talk about so i kind of hope brines in the future for the optic four if it exists i hope that they kind of do demos of the max but also the flex now the flex is not my pad whatsoever but if they offered that i would love to take a look at it and test it out to kind of let people kind of know because if someone watches one of my videos and you know how much i love stiff pads they're like okay he likes that pad i might not like that but with that flex profile on there showing people that yes this isn't my preference but this pad which is a butterfly stiff big rebound pad does have this really soft option look at what it can do for you i think that would be extremely beneficial for them in the future because i think this pad in its flex profile might be what a lot of people are looking for and they just might not know it really exists because this is the one that kind of hits most shelves is the max so i won't do weights anymore and i always talk about that but for weight and balance this thing honestly when you hold it like this feels decently light but does have some like weight up here that's a stiffer thigh and everything when wearing it, it doesn't feel heavy, but it doesn't feel like a warrior light pad or some of those other pads where you put them on it instantly feels light. It does feel like there's stuff here. Personally, I don't think Brian's needs to cut down on weights and stuff. They used to do that. The Sub-Zero and everything was a pad where they were just all like weight cut, weight cut, weight cut type thing. They got rid of the straps. There is a lot on this pad that makes it really high quality and really nice and kind of above other brands if they don't need to do i don't think they need to change it i understand that people want that lighter idea and everything so you could spec this out to be lighter and maybe going forward maybe the optic 4 does i love all these details everywhere on here as you can see it's all gen pro right it's all sewn same with over here it's all gen pro it's all sewn it has like stiff blocks in here you could nylon this whole thing just put nylon all the way here. You're gonna save some weight on that because none of that will be Gen Pro. Obviously, nylon is lighter than Gen Pro. You could also thin this out and make it softer. I like what it is now, but again, that would make it lighter. I wanna preference this and say this again. I don't find an issue with these pads with weight 
or how they feel. I had no issues playing with them whatsoever, but people always chase numbers. And I feel like this is a pad where you could very easily get a lower number if you were really wanted to and change some things. And it really wouldn't negatively affect the pad besides how nice this looks. And I don't think this needs to be like this. It looks beautiful, but it is kind of extravagant. And I think going to a more minimalist thing here might save them some weight, might give them some brownie points in that. And you'd still have a very high quality pad. It won't just be like spoke and pretty what this is. So that's about it for the review of the Brian's Optic three pads. I did the whole set. Huge thanks to Brian's for letting me test, take out their demo set and letting me use these. They let me do this for this one in the Genetic 5. So it was greatly appreciated. So I could take a look at these and try them out and see how they do on the puck machine and everything and also do a full and detailed review like this. So hopefully this video was helpful. Please let Brian's know on social media if you wanna see me review their gear in the future and if these videos are helpful, it would be greatly appreciated because it doesn't always happen where I'm allowed to get demo sets and try stuff on. I sometimes I often have to buy gear. So this is greatly appreciated, but that would also help me in the long run as well. So thank you very much for watching this video. Remember to like this video, subscribe to me on YouTube, follow me on Instagram and TikTok, links are in the description. If you wanna support the channel so I can keep making more videos and doing more content and you're buying hockey equipment anyways, Check out the links in the description. If you're in Canada to Hockey Supremacy, if you're in the US to Pure Hockey, clicking those links, making a purchase, gives me a kickback so I can keep making more content and doing more reviews. Otherwise, if you wanna just support the channel, check out the links in the description to buy me a coffee. Everything through any of these links in the description always comes back into the channel so I can keep making more content and doing more reviews. You're watching hockeyreviews.ca.